really hot today? All right, guys, one of the next things we're going to be doing on the uh, ticket magnet is going ahead and swapping over the 90 plus turbo manifold from the hog as well as the 60 trim Garrett T3 turbocharger from the hog. One thing that we'll be doing uh, before it actually goes on the ticket magnet is we'll be swapping on this nice, freshly powder coated muffler black high temp 0.48 housing um, instead of this uh, 0.63 housing. That had the silver coating on it previously. Not only was I not thrilled about how the uh, .63 spooled, but uh, I also was completely pissed off about how the silver coating uh, died in action basically on this turbo housing. I went ahead and tested this specific powder on my own stuff before putting it on any customer product because I was kind of suspect of the way I received it. I kind of got it in a, a Ziploc gallon bag from an online seller. So I went ahead and tested it on my own stuff and saw exactly what it did. I mean, I can basically just rub what's left of the stuff off my uh, off my housing here. So we're going to go ahead and give this muffler black from Powder by the Pound a uh, shot and see if we can get better results out of this. I'm going to be going ahead and showing you guys today just exactly how easy it is on these Garrett turbos to swap between a .63 and a .48. It's really simple on these Garrett units. Uh, it's basically only six bolts, and I'm going to go ahead and show you exactly what it takes to get swapped over. Basically, the turbocharger that you're looking at in front of you has no swing valve on it whatsoever. It's why the five studs here are exposed. And uh, once you've basically got that swing valve off and disconnected it from the wastegate actuator arm, all you have to do is take this series of six bolts around the uh, exhaust housing to the center section right here. These six bolts need to just come off, and then you'll uh, be able to easily swap over your housing. Alright guys, here's a cool little trick for you if you may be having problems getting a standard 13 millimeter to grab these bolts. One thing I found in the past is that a half inch wrench grips a 13 millimeter bolt just slightly tighter than the 13 millimeter does. It needs to be tapped on with a hammer most times, but a lot of times this box end will grab with enough uh, purchase to be able to turn a bolt out that normally the 13 millimeter would just slip on. It's really useful in an event where you can't get these other close ends around the uh, bolt itself because of the fittings from the oil and the water on the turbo. Once you break them all loose, you can go back to the 13 and it just slides right over the bolt without having to fight it or hammer it on. But man, as far as getting these bolts to turn without rounding them off, I found a half inch wrench to be my friend uh, in dark times for sure. Another little trick I like to use is sometimes you'll have a bolt that comes up underneath an oil boss or a water boss or the drain or something like that. And you'll be able to actually use the bolt as almost like a lifting jack to kind of push the center section out of this housing once you have all the bolts loose. Like right now they're all kind of hand tight. So by pushing this up, I'm actually separating the housing from the center section. I'll do the same thing back here to see it kind of lines up so I'll just evenly kind of use this to push that housing out and it'll eventually pop out. And it looks like we're already free. So once it's free, I just rotate the housing, get it to where I can do it by hand, Easy peasy. See, you just kind of rotate. And I'm sure you can see why I'm not a fan of this mummy dust that's left on this housing. You can clearly see right away my cast iron underneath is nice and clean. That's that gray of the dead that you want to see on your cast iron. This silver just doesn't survive the way it's advertised to. It's a complete failure. This muffler black 
been proven tough on the exhaust manifold itself. This has been shot and run for about a thousand miles. Has no flaking whatsoever as we've seen on the housing previous. Alright guys, so at this point you would normally go ahead and install the housing that you would want to have on your turbocharger and uh, bolt it back on your vehicle and you'd be on your way at that point. What I am going to do at this point, which I'm not going to show in this specific video, is I'll be tearing this turbocharger down since there was a little bit of white smoke. I don't know if that was from the engine itself or from the turbocharger. Uh, so I wanted to go through and just give this a, a clean bill of health before I reassemble it. But if you were to be reassembling this on your vehicle and you did want to reinstall the housing, this is how it would go. First, let's take a uh, quick comparison look. You see that 63 housing is just notably physically larger. Like, as far as spatial comparison, the 63 housing is just way bigger than the 48 housing. So I can see the difference. Um, hopefully we'll be able to feel the difference. I definitely feel the difference in the 4248 that I have on the ticket magnet currently between the uh, 63 boost threshold that I had on the way to Davis. So uh, I think this is going to be a good move for us overall. And uh, this is how it would be installed if you were to put it back on your car. Got your brackets. In this case, we'll be replacing all the hardware. We will not be reusing any of the hardware since we beat on it pretty good. Whammo. So I know it doesn't really uh, show well at this angle, but you can kind of see it just slips right in there. Directly where the 63 was is exactly where the 48 is going to be sitting. Um, we'll orient it the exact same way we would previously. The outlet facing up, this facing towards the front of the car, this facing the manifold obviously. Uh, drain would be facing down. The wastegate actuator arm itself would be lined up with the swing valve and we'll verify that before we tighten it down. Alright, so basically just real quick running you through it. If you were getting ready to reinstall this on your car, you would go ahead and you would put these brackets back on and keep everything nice and loose. Just thread all the bolts in by hand, but leave them loose so that you're able to rotate the housing on the center section. Otherwise, you'll never be able to thread in all these bolts. We'll start our other bracket. All right, now that we kind of got everything that's in front of us all mocked up, but still able to rotate, what we'll want to do is we'll want to get it to the point where it's about right for our application. Go ahead and grab your wastegate flapper and verify that you are indeed in the correct position and we are not here. Boom. You can use the wastegate flapper to verify that you're in the correct position. And that looks about right right there, that's correct. This is the point where you would torque everything down and you would go ahead and you would use the half inch wrench if you needed to to get better purchase on the bolts like I showed you. Um, the ones that are going to be covered you're not going to be able to lock a nice six point box wrench down on like you will be able to on some of them like this guy that's out in the open. But this half inch right here just slam him onto the bolt, bam, good to go. Make sure you're uh, torquing evenly all the way across and you'll be good to go. It really is as simple as that, guys. The, uh, the stigma of the difficulty of turbochargers can be broken through basic education and a little bit of uh, common sense. There's effectively 11 bolts that are required to swap off a housing on a Garrett T3 base turbo, and that's the five bolts for the swing valve and the six bolts that hold the turbine housing to the center section. Don't be afraid of it. Um, the big things to watch out for are be really ginger if you're removing a housing that's been on the turbo for a long time because what's going to want to happen is you may end up hitting the turbo with a hammer or something, getting aggressive with it, and then that turbine wheel will hit the housing itself and be damaged. So that's the only real main thing to watch out for when swapping an exhaust housing. But uh, other than that, guys, if you've gone ahead and uh, liked this video today, make sure you give that big thumbs up, make sure you hit that subscribe button, and I'll see you in the next one.